Um, my name is Natalie Boyle, and I am. I work on behalf of VTrans. I do what we call project outreach. Probably some of you have gotten my public meeting notice to be here today. It's on my update list. Um, I will tell you what I do, and then I'll introduce the line of folks at the table. We'll get a general overview, scope of the project, and then we'll open up the floor for questions, um, discussion, concerns. So essentially, as outreach coordinator, what I do is I act as a liaison between the public, businesses, EMS, schools, um, the media, and VTrans and the contractor. So if there's a question or an issue throughout construction, I'm the person to get in touch with because I have direct access. And it, it, the lines of communication go a lot smoother and it's a lot more efficient than if you end up calling Montpelier because then they have to figure out whose project it is and then where is it. And it eventually trickles down to me anyway. So I have, um, I guess you all have the fact sheet. My name and number are on the back. My business cards are here and I also have a sign up sheet if you want to be on any of that email communication. Basically, those updates go out on Thursdays, typically, unless there's a schedule change, or if we feel because of the, especially in the downtown portion, when we're kind of days or nights, or however it's going to go, if we feel like there needs to be more than one update issued a week, then you'll get them twice a week from me. Um, there's also, on that update, there's an unsubscribe option, so if you're getting the updates and you feel like, eh, I don't, I don't really need them anymore. You can just unsubscribe yourself. It's pretty easy to be um, user friendly. So um, this is Nick Pappas. Did I say your last name right? Close enough. <laughs> um, Brandon Kipp, he's the project manager. Chris Lavalette, he's the resident engineer. He'll be on site at the job trailer um, on the project. Joe Starr from Jay Hutchins and Brandon Gatapi from Jay Hutchins and they will be project supervisors, project managers for the contractor. So Brandon's going to give us a quick overview of the project and what you can expect over the next few months, over the summer into the fall, and then we'll go from questions from there. Okay? Okay. Um, I think most of you have had fact sheets, but I'll just give you a general over overview of where the project is located. Um, it begins um, at the Panton, Virgin's town line. Um, and extends over to the train trestle, um, just uh, what just east of the Kennedy Brothers complex, and then it's also on Green Street. Um, that starts at the intersection of Green Street and 22A, and then runs south to about where the Eagles Club facility is, over by Route 7. Um, so this is a this is a Class One paving project. So our paving program. Um, it dedicates a portion of funds to pave Class 1 town highways all throughout the state of Vermont. So generally speaking, um, every, every municipality who has Class 1 um, town highway is on a 10 to a 15 year cycle to receive a federally slash state funded um, improvement, improvement like this. Um, so I, I don't remember the last time we paved for Jens, but I think it was generally 10 or 12 years ago. So this is, that's why we're here today. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Class 1 town highway is, it's pretty much um, Vermont 22A. Um, we don't, uh, the state does not control that segment of 22A. It's actually owned by the city of Virgins. And then for some reason, Green Street is not a state designated route, but it's considered a Class 1 town highway. I don't know the backstory on that, but those are the, the two Class 1 town highways in the city of Virgins, and I think it's generally about 2.75 miles. Green Street and Haven Road used to be the extension. Okay, maybe that's the history. Yeah. Before they built the bypass coming down the hill. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's about 2.75 miles of Class <laughs> One highway in Virgins, and generally speaking, it's about a million dollars per mile to do this this type of improvement. Um, so it's it's fairly expensive to do this type of work. It's pretty. Pretty, uh, you know, it's not easy to work in a, in a city environment. A lot of restrictions, um, things like that. So um, next year we're going to do the, the Virgins Class Ones and the, I believe the Woodstock, um, Woodstock Hartford. Hartford Woodstock. Yeah. yeah. Hartford and um, our budget's usually about, about 100 million dollars a year. And generally speaking, we usually dedicate about 10 million of that of that money to Class One uh, highway work. Um, scope of work um, is 
we call it two inch mill and fill. So we'll, we'll, we'll mill off two inches, um, followed by a half inch, what we call a leveling course that kind of levels out the imperfections of the highway. And then the, the final course will be an inch and a half, and we call that a wearing surface. So generally speaking, it's a two inch mill and fill. Um, in addition to that, um, we do the signs. Um, we, we look at all the signs for MUTCD compliance. Um, we also add uh, line, line striping. Um, we also look at some of the ADA compliance stuff that happens in the village because uh, there's federal funds tied to it. So there is some ADA issues. We'll address those. Um, we also add uh, some signal improvements. We're not going to do a full-fledged signal design. Um, usually a full-fledged signal <laughs> redesign will be about half a million dollars. So generally speaking, on a signal, we're looking to spend between 20 and 60 grand on upgrades, like detection and things like that, push buttons. Um, drainage is, is usually confined to the first one foot or so. We usually just adjust the structures, the existing uh, catch basins. Uh, we don't add any culverts, um, except for this one's a little bit funky because we added um, uh, the alternative B, I, bel I believe, as part of the truck bypass study. So if you notice, just south of Pan Road, there's a, there's a more rural section of Class 1 that's pretty narrow. So we, we've added some uh, drive culverts to that segment to add a little bit more width. Um, but let me just touch on the truck bypass study. So there was a, a study that came out. Most of you are probably aware of it. One alternative was the full-fledged um, truck bypass study. Bypass. One alternative was it, an off-line route that would detour trucks onto Route 17, I believe. And then there was like an inline alternative where they would, we would add some uh, traffic calming features throughout the highway to make it more pedestrian friendly. So our upper management kind of asked, approached us and we did the best we could to add some of those features that were in the, the study. And the study didn't design anything. We had to go out and we had to look, we had to make sure that it worked from an engineering perspective turning radiuses for trucks, drainage, things like that, and, and just to make sure it fell within the scope of a Class 1 highway. We weren't going to go outside the right-of-way. We weren't going to do utility relocation routing. We did the best we could to try to uh, add as many features of that alternative as, as possible. So in the plans, we included some traffic calming features and some bulb outs, and uh, I think some pavement markings that were in the study for some sharrows, I believe. Um, that all came from that, that study, and we did the best we could to add those features. The features that we did not add were features that were outside the right-of-way or um, triggered the need for um, a much more drainage, closed drainage system, and it kind of breached the scope of work for our project. Um, so with that said, I think, uh, I think most of it will probably be our questions for you guys as far as schedule. That's all I have to kind of summarize the, the um, general scope of work. and. My end of things. Anybody have any? I'm sure you have questions. Yeah. Um, it, on your on your informational, it says here that the work hours are 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> just in the village. Just in the just in the downtown area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah outside of that, it's daylight to to dusk. When you plan to start? Beginning of April. Yeah. It's weather dependent, but as soon as April first. We got a job trailer. Um, a field office. Um, a couple, a couple blocks. Yeah, the South Maple Street. Yep. One street over. That's not going to be there for like three years, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> The idea is to start in the spring and finish before the snow flies, if not way before that. Way before that. Yes. Will there be any periods of time where, for example, access or travel will be restricted during the day? Um, specifically, we run the farmer's market that is resident at the Green on Thursdays, and we're trying to gauge if we have to schedule around anything to either not have an event or 
deal with parking so, or anything so, like that? So the, the 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. restriction begins at the, uh, I believe it's the, the bridge joint um, at Otter Creek, and it extends all the way over to the street that intersects with the uh, City Hall. East Street. So, so I believe that the zone that you're talking about will, will all be night work, so it shouldn't be a problem. So during the day, it reverts to whatever use it has, and there's no Co restrictions. Correct. That use. Correct. Okay. So for the section coming down the hill, um, which our address is 94 West Main, right across from the site, um, when you're doing that, you're also going to be redoing the driveway apron to match mm -hmm. and. We have two driveway aprons, and we have guests that come back. So what's the prognosis for that? Because I know when you strip, you're going to strip. You're not you're going to strip the whole thing. You're not going to strip half. And then so we'll make sure you have access to all your driveways. All the driveway aprons will be done at the end after the final course of paving. We'll come back and, and pave the driveway. And the culverts are not getting, is that getting widened there? There's so it's, I think it was getting straightened. Four, I think four culverts that will get changed out, but for the most part, we don't touch driveway culverts. And they are south, so I'm not sure which, which. So do, do you sort of send somebody the afternoon of the day before you going to start working on their, the, the access to their driveway? I mean, it seems to me when one time before there was a little paving and somebody knocked on the door and said, well, we're going to be blocking your driveway for a little bit today or something like that. That was Jim Lero. He does that on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small town. So we'll be in contact with Natalie. So if, if you get on her list, she'll give you areas where we are going to be working. Any, if, if we're in front of your driveway, we you'll still have access to it. Um, we're going to be there. It'll be minimal. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect us. Um, I'm curious, what kind of material do you use for striping, you know, for pedestrian crossings and so on? Is it going to be a paint product or something that's laid on? I mean, I know there are a few different materials. And we've been painting on an annual basis. Is this something that's going to last more than a year uh, or so not? What do we have in the poly? Bill, if you use the reflective tape for this, which would be a great idea, but it would be a huge burden on the city after they leave in the future years because it's so much more expensive to use this tape. So you, we would have to contract it out every year to use that tape because we don't have the machine or the equipment to retake everything as it needs to be replaced. I guess I don't even know what the, so the it's options poly. are. It's a paint, paint based. Okay. Town, so town chose the poly area. It's a durable marking. Okay. No more than you see pretty much everywhere. We cross our fingers the last two years. There you go. And like he said, you know, you also, it's expensive to go and tape's hard to paint over. Yeah. You know, so trying to do the most economical thing for this okay. for the, for the town as everybody's out of here. Do you guys ever recess your paint? I used to have buffalo as part of my territory, <coughs> and they actually recess where the paint stripe's going to be, and then the paint fills it in so that way you're not grinding it off the class. Yeah, um, so for class one town highways, we ultimately give the municipality their choice what they want for markings because it's their highway. Um, but what we would recommend for probably an environment like this, it used to be inlay tape, so we would inlay the tape behind the paver. Um, but uh, we're not using that anymore with the agency, so now we're using the, in, the, uh, I think the inlay that you just described um, on environments similar to this, like a city environment, town environment. So that's what, probably what we would probably recommend, but we also ultimately give it the, the, the town their, their, uh, you know, their preference. So. How's the truck traffic going to be handled during the stripping and paving? Because with you know six to eight hundred trucks a day going down you're not going to be able to have one-way traffic and not have everything backed up through Charlotte yeah particularly on West Main where Collins comes in during rush hour right because that won't be night paving mm -hmm. Maybe they'll find their way to 17 for a <laughs> <laughs> Can we put a sign up to direct them to 17 or we, DOT's plan for that? Oh, yeah. 
we don't we don't go and tell them where to go. You know, we'll put the signs up. That's why Natalie's here. The word gets out. We'll have message boards at the beginning and the end of the job. So there'll be one over by seven. There'll be ones down here. So they'll catch on pretty quick. Um, it's not going to be flawless. I mean, you know, it's it is what it is in the environment it is. So the hope is that they will think twice and you know take another route as best they can. Right, but back at 17, if you put a sign saying road restricted ahead, they'll turn down 17 versus if you put it at the cemetery yeah, where it's already too late. I don't think we, we thought about that, did we? No. And it's something that I I don't see why we couldn't put another portable changeable message board down there. Yeah, like optional detour. Okay. Yeah, or just say, we don't want to tell them where to go. We just want to tell them, this is where you're coming, and they'll figure it out on their own. So that's a good, no, that's a good idea. No, that's good. I do consult them. <laughs> no, that's great. You know, I mean, not, we, you know, this isn't our first class one, and every environment's usually different. And we realize that truck traffic. That's why the, the bypass study and everything's going on. You know, we stand right out here and watch them, one right after the other, going up and down. You know, It'll be safer for your guys too if they're not hauling through there. <laughs> they'll sl they'll slow down when they get everybody. You know, but it is true. It's 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 hard. It's, construction's not an easy environment to be in, especially when you're flagging traffic and the whole thing. We all know that. Well, if we did night work everywhere, then people who live in the residences don't want the noise. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's see the <laughs> truck traffic's <laughs> worse. Yeah. yeah, nobody's around. Yeah. 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 You'll find that out. Yeah. 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 I saw a hand somewhere. Here. Yeah, I was just trying to get a beat on the hours again. So is it one spot's going to be the night work, and other spots will be day work, so there's not one spot that's going to be 24 hours the whole time, or Correct. am uh, I missing? East Street North is daylight to dark, is daytime. Uh -huh. The bridge south is during daylight hours, yeah. and then East Street to the bridge is night work. And then City Hall <laughs> out to the train to the BR that's, Kennedy Brothers that's is dirty. day. Yeah. Yeah. But if you live near the night zone, you'll hear that too. You will. So you could have a 24 hour experience. What? <laughs> Are you running 24 hours? You're not, you're not running crews on the extreme and in the middle at the same time, are you? It, there may be some overlap. It'll be minimal if it does. A couple shifts on each end, possibly, but there may be some overlap. The section in front of the animal hospital is very narrow and oftentimes mm -hmm. trucks go off the side. Is there anything to address? Um, like if you drive by there, I bet there's ruts right now. Um, I, just, I was just noticing that. Where's the animal hospital again? I'm sorry. It's um, near Kennedy, Kennedy Brothers. Brothers. Oh, okay. You, that not that little yeah, bit yeah, right yeah. there. Okay. Just the road gets pretty narrow there for, you know, when the larger trucks are going. That was, a, that was in the study, and we looked at that, and I think we did whatever we could to get some width out of there, but I think there was, it was tight. It was, it, tight. It was tight. difficult with the ditch. And exactly. Stuff. The ditch was a tart, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start touching that, and now we're touching drainage, which, right. you know, we try not to do. And then next thing you know, we're in right away. So we did, we, we walked that, mm -hmm. and we looked at it, and we, you know, we spun it with the town a bunch of times trying to figure out what, you know, we want to do the most we can do. Right. You know, and that was just one of those, you know, and then all the water goes down to the bottom. It's like when you go down the hill right before the animal hospital. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like, yeah, it's like literally in front yeah. of the yeah. animal hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually going to be moving to the two catch basins just before the animal hospital on this side early spring this year. And I'm only going to move them a foot and a half. But I thought, you know what, a foot and a half is going to help. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and what the problem was, I was even going to move them more, but there's now a gas line, underground gas line, and there's the water main. So I'm going to tuck one of the catch basins about three inches from the water main, and the other one about three inches from the gas. So. Yeah, the other, you know, you start running the utilities, yeah. the right away, the, the whole gamut. So real quickly, I want to just go back to the kind of night work, day work question. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with Joe and his crew before we were in Manchester or last year and year before. And so, of <coughs> course, this whole shindig is weather dependent, right? <laughs> some things they can do in the rain, some things they can't, obviously. 
Um, so a lot of times there can be some shifting. So maybe they were planning to do night work and maybe the, the forecast for temperatures isn't going to work for paving or painting, for example. So they might shift and say, okay, I know on Thursday Natalie put out that we're doing night work on Sunday, but on Friday all of a sudden Joe's like, it's not going to work. So we're not doing night work now on Sunday. We're going to start Monday and this is the plan. So that's where information that comes from me is really useful. And I believe I've spoken with Daniel and I've spoken with Julie. They're going to share information through their channels as well, through the town channels, social media, whatever contacts they have, so that particularly when we're getting close to that downtown area for business owners um, and for your customer base and for you know tourists and travelers, we're going to do the absolute best we can to make sure you know what's going to happen. And but. Expect things to change. Expect me to put something out on a Thursday and have it change by Saturday. It just happens sometimes. Like Nick said, this, there's just no perfect science to this. And that's where um, coming to meetings like this and sharing your ideas and sharing your concerns and then just understanding where the contractor is coming from, where VTrans is coming from, and you know that we're all on the same team. Sometimes I, I think because construction can be frustrating. It gets to be a little bit of us and them, but really, when we can, and when, when the contractor can, they, they try to make it work for everybody. And so, just a little bit of understanding on both ends. So when you're frustrated about something, and you know, I can go to Chris and Joe, and they say, you know, we can make this, we can massage this a little and make it better. But on the other end, you know, when traffic does back up, because you know what's going to happen, <laughs> um, planning ahead maybe and saying, gosh, you know what, I should add an extra 10 minutes today, or I could go the back way, or, or whatever. We just, we want to try to work together to make it work. And um, being able to have my information, being able to look at different social media avenues and other information avenues so that you know what's going on and when and expecting a change every so often, um, that's really important just to know that, that we do the best we can, but to understand it's not a perfect science and things are going to adjust and change as we go, particularly with the weather. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because when we're going back and forth between night and days, things do kind of get a little wonky sometimes. So, um, so this project is still happening at the same time as Bristol's? And so are they completely two separate crews, two set, separate sets of equipment, or is everything being shared back and forth? So it's It'll be shared. so those communications, so whatever's happening in Bristol will affect what's happening in Virgins and vice versa. Yes, and so I have, right now I have a Bristol list and I have a Virgins list, yeah. and I need to talk to the towns and decide, do they want me to send those out as separate? I know what I think I would want to happen, but it doesn't matter what I want. Um, or, you know, so does everyone want to see, receive one update that has the work in both towns at the same time, or do you want to receive them separately? Yeah. And there's no way to do, obviously, one town at a time or anything like that. I mean, it's just financially, it's it's not, you know, it's kind of why we bulk them together. Yeah. We Try to save money that yeah. way. Yeah. So when they come in and they're, I'm, don't, I might misspeak, they're going to want to mill, they're going to pick wherever they're going to mill. Yeah. And since that equipment's closed, then they're going to want to move it over to the next place and mill. They're not going to go ship it off some 20 miles away and then bring it, you know, they're going to mm -hmm. want to be efficient with what they do with their equipment and everything else. So there'll be times during this period where obviously it'll just be a standstill, nothing going on, and say, you know, one of those towns because of the attention. That's not the intent, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will there be times that both the New Haven, Green Street Road, and Main Street would traffic would be affected on both? Because it's got they're essentially like two exits out of town. Potentially, yes. <laughs> but most. Yes, <coughs> most most of the work. I mean, we won't be milling in both sections in the same at the same time. Any of the big big equipment will, will be concentrated on either one or the other, but we could be working on structures or something. There could be small packages on, uh, on one while the other one's going. Mm -hmm. uh, in your product description you talk, and you noted about the sidewalks earlier, um, is that throughout this whole section of what you're talking about in relation to the paving, you're going to be looking at the sidewalks all throughout? 
And are you going to be keeping the kind of aesthetic that we have here in Virgins with the brick and the, uh, you know, that sort of thing that they already have set up along Main Street by the businesses? So most, most of our work um, doesn't change a lot of what, what's there. Mm -hmm. We are putting ball belts at Mc, McDonough, mm -hmm. East Street, and Moncton. Moncton Road. Mm -hmm. There's ball belts at those three intersections, um, but most of it will be green space close to it. And there's there's a little bit of brickwork at Green Street where we're using the brick that are there. Okay, so it's not going to involve a lot of sidewalk work and curbing and things like that along Main Street that would probably affect businesses and things like that. We're trying not to go past, past yeah, the curb, yeah. for lack of better terms, but you yeah. know, we got to have the ADA compliant and all that yeah. stuff. So right. we're not ripping sidewalk up. We just don't like, we just don't yeah. want, small, that would be a right. grant. That would be a grant you would get for the town to replace your sidewalk. Yeah. Small okay. isolated yeah. spots. Small yeah. isolated. Yeah. Okay. We're just 660 feet a year. You said you're building a bump out on East Street, oh. on Main Street? Not East Street, not East Street. Sorry. Because it's narrow already, yeah. so they put a bump out there. Green and Moncton. Moncton, right. Miss Green. Sorry. What's a bump out? It's, it narrows the, the green space. Yeah. What's that? Green space. 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 You can look. Right, because we're, we're going to pedestrian control lights yeah. now. Yeah. So it makes bump outs less necessary because they don't have to worry as much because yes. traffic will be stopped. For them. And they'll be out there even though they don't have the light saying cross, traffic will be able to see them better while they're standing there also. It helps. Yeah. Just makes truck traffic a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're not going past where, like, the parking stalls or anything are, but it does tighten things up, yes. Kind of, it is a common feature, but yes, big trucks, yes. We couldn't include them all. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a lot, there, I think there's a lot more in the report that we yeah. couldn't include because of the, the turning radiuses and the drainage. Yep. Just from the engineering perspective, it didn't work, so we, didn't, we couldn't include all of them. <coughs> yeah. I think on one of them on, was it Green Street? We actually did like up by across from City Hall. There's that little cut in there so drainage could go down. We did that. We took that, how the town did that, and we came up with a solution with the town. Like, hey, this could work here. That's another thing. You start putting ball dots in, where's water going to go? Now we're shoving out in the middle of the street. Yeah. So that was a huge factor in adding ball dots. I'm, I'm not a proponent for ball dots. Just uh, more on the subject of traffic calming, uh, are the bubbles you're talking about mm -hmm. putting in roughly the same size as the ones that are already there, or bigger or smaller? They vary. Yeah. They vary on the width. It's pretty much, you know, the roughly, main line. Roughly the same size. I won't say totally the same size. They're close, but they are, they're different in their own way. They probably won't be as big because on the side where we have the three ball belts now, it's angle parking. And on the other side of the road where they're going to be adding bulb outs, it's only parallel parking. Um, so they won't have to come out as far. So they'll be a little smaller. They'll, very, yeah. they'll probably be smaller on the side, right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying not to go past, past the edge of parking. Of parking. Right? So they would, it would be narrower. All right, thanks, Jim. And, I, I, oh. I'm sorry, I had a two-part question okay. about, about the, the traffic. Um, you, you talked about uh, pavement markings as well. Um, and can you, can you just tell me a little bit more what those are supposed to accomplish and what they're going to be? Uh, it's basically put back what's there, but yeah. what we also have to go through is we have to look, make sure that the, the line striping is MUTCD compliant. So that, that's a manual that we all have to follow. Um, the fence. You're not creating bike lanes or anything. We are adding some sharrows, I believe. Yeah. Sharrows are like a sharrows. Sharrows yeah. is kind of like a little chevron. It's like a it's supposed to like share. It's supposed to like you know. Uh, it tells you to share with the traffic that's there. Yeah, yeah, in the report, the, the, the planners put a few sharrows <laughs> throughout the corridor. The sharrows are just meant to alert the traffic and the cyclists that this is a shared lane. Yeah. So I believe okay. we added a few of those along the corridor on well, 22 A. A few of the, well, just downtown or throughout the corridor, or where, where are they going? 
Uh, I believe they're periodically placed just on 22A, I believe. <coughs> the whole thing is 22A. But no, Green Street, 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 Green Street. Green Street. Oh, they're, they're just going on? No, Green Street is another segment. Okay, okay. they're not going on Green Street. I don't believe so. Okay. No, so don't they're believe just so. on the main, on yeah. main right. Street. Right. So. And of the whole length? Or? Uh, I believe they're of the whole length, periodically spaced. I'll have to look at the plans to, to validate that. So, but. Every ten feet, every twenty. No, feet. no, every way, feet. way no. farther apart than that. I, I, we wouldn't know right off the off the bat. Um, I believe the town has a set of plans, so you could go there and take a little take a little look at where the shareholders are put. Matt, you 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 have. Yeah, they're on my place, Andy. If you want to swing over, for <laughs> <it>. <laughs> we kept it under wraps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but they're accurate. It's not it's not um, continuous, but it's enough. It's frequent enough that. It, Reminds everybody that people will, people will see them when they're doing oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks. You know, and, and, and a lot of times we put shares in, you know, you kind of like a buffer space. But as you know, out here there is no buffer. Yeah. There's no buffer. So. Yeah, yeah originally we wanted a bike lane, but the, yeah. the original mm -hmm. road just didn't. Yeah. Can we go over here first? All right. Hey, uh, hi. I understand that you've been alerted to a couple of uh, parades, but we also have another little event on the 19th. In, on the city green of 19th of September that draws about a thousand people. That I wanted to know how we could work with you on scheduling around, you know, just so we're not maybe leaving <laughs> that section the day before, so we're not smelling all the tar, or I, right. I don't know how to approach that, but I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah, and that might be in my notes. I remember I was looking yeah, on the, the events that would give it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what we can do is, what I like to do is as we, you know, maybe a yeah. month out, or I like to just kind of, hey, remember, <laughs> yeah. this is happening, hey, remember, this is happening, of course, it happened in Manchester a lot. Yeah. And they had some outdoor things, and, you know, Joe moved the dusty operation somewhere else for that evening so that, you know, they could have their event. So, um, and that's where being in close contact with Julie and Daniel um, on my end is really good because then we can keep that. Um, summer events, and especially fall events, are, you know, on our radar for sure. Yeah. Um, but thank you. Okay. Yep. Great. Are we losing any parking spots in Main Street? You were reading my mind. I just made a note to my note to self. What about parking spots? So if you guys can. Right. Yeah. So the, I mentioned the MBTCD, which is a, a guideline that we have to we have to follow um, because we use, we're using federal federal funds. Um, and with that, there's certain restrictions that we can't put parking right up against a crosswalk. Um, and so what, what ends up happening is you eliminate one space and then it has a domino effect along the entire corridor. So what we've done on previous class ones is we show the existing striping on a layout sheet. So this is what you have for parking, this is what you have for existing striping. This is what the MUTCD is, is telling us. What do you want to do? We could either, we could stripe the center line and leave it blank and the city can stripe whatever they want or you can abide by the MBTCD and we put an MBTCD compliant striping plan down. So what we'll do in, the, on this, in this case is we'll stripe the temporary markings on that first layer of pavement, that half inch layer that I mentioned earlier. We'll stripe everything to design. And if there's any problems with anything, then we can make that decision. We'll just leave it blank. City can do whatever they want or we can stripe it per plan. But because we can't we can't not follow the MDTCD because it's it's federally federally funded. Could you define that that set of initials? Oh, the acronym oh. MUTCD. The Manual. Municipal Uniform Manual. Traffic Manual. Manual for Manual uniform for Uniform Traffic. traffic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically, it's it's all signs and lines, safety okay. related okay. document. Well, now I know why you. Yeah. Use <laughs> you know, it, it, it's state law, so we have to follow it. Yeah. So any funds, even state funds. Well, sometimes sure, we, you sure, know, yeah. I'm not going to swear yeah, by I, that. I just want to know what it, we got to do it. And, and what was? So. You're going to lose 23 parking spaces. We're going to lose 23. Yep. Well, because of the MUTCD. So oh. yeah, you ask the question. You ask how many, and, yeah. and that's why he just We're told you. Main Street, but we the <laughs> I know, no, but you know, yeah. it's it's. Just so you know, it's good to know now, and that's why Brandon said we're going to go through. We're going to put them in, and that on that half inch leveling course. And you guys sit there and decide, hey, we don't want to do it. We do the main line in the whole nine yards, and you guys come back in and stripe it whatever way you want. I also want to make a point here that there's a reason for guidelines that I've been following for many, many years now in this city. And the reason for the guidelines is to protect the, the pedestrians and to protect the motor vehicles. Um, so I, I certainly hope we don't go backwards on this great two million 
the two point some odd million dollar project and do something that might jeopardize the safety of a pedestrian or a vehicle, that's all. I just want to make that point. We want to be honest with you, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, and as you would know, you know how it works. Mm -hmm. You know? Maybe the city just needs to find a different lot that we can have overflow for. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of side street parking yeah. though that's always available. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really not that much of an issue. But a lot of the problems I think are on the side streets where the parking space is too close to the intersection. Yeah. It's not so much on Main Street, but I think they've been trying to squeeze the parking spaces on the side streets. Yeah. And you're going to lose some of those, but the further the distance from Main Street, the less effect it's going to yeah. have. I mean, just around the park, it's hugely, it's extremely tight. Um, I, when I know and we've all heard the word 26, we're like, oh my God. Um, but can you describe, I mean, when I saw it, it's, it's not just like that three block spot, it's beyond that. So could you maybe expand upon like... Three, three, you mean... Do you mean where the Well, we're not saying just the 26 spot, spots yeah. right in our little three block area of, of commerce, but... So, okay. so I think, so this is rough because I went out and counted, so... <laughs> <laughs> so from Water Street to East Street, I think they're, they'll be losing 12, 12 spots. East to Moncton, I think you're going to lose five, and then I didn't go any further. <laughs> um, but it's 23 total. Could you yeah. 23 total. Uh, 12 from Water Street to East Street. <clears throat> five from East to Moncton. We have a pretty detailed layout sheet that shows all the existing markings in red and all the pros in green, and a, and a, and a table that shows where they're being reduced. Is it so, on this website? It's not on the website, no. 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 We can, could we can, it be put on this? This. I, I think something that could go to Natalie and Natalie can push it out. Sure, what do you, what do you think? It'd be great if yeah. the public could just see that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think, Julie, I think you have that spreadsheet. I think I've given you that. Uh, yeah, just I need to do that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So you think you showed, like, current and then... I'll have to dig it. Okay. okay. But, yeah. And I can talk with Brandon. And a lot of it's, you know, it's, it's the side streets pushing everything out to make things safe. The pedestrians. Um, just that distance just coming out of driveways too you know that you start losing stuff on this side because somebody's got to get out and swing you know and you get a car like this which you all been doing forever in many places you know you just you know try and get out there the best you can so we're not doing it because we want to do it. Yeah. 23 and 26. We understand yeah. the impact we can I have. I heard two numbers also. So is it 23? I'll go back and look at that diagram. Let's look at that diagram. Last I know it was 23, and if it's 26, it's we're close in that yeah. area. Yeah. We did a pretty detailed reconnaissance of it, and we drew it up pretty pretty yeah. elaborately. <coughs> we, we asked the consultant to, we, we need to see both ends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you running, when are you running your story? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, so you won't have to. Be general then. <laughs> I'll call it two dozen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else have comment, question, concern? This was a great meeting. You have an email sign up? So right, right here. there on the table, my cards are there. And of course, um, Daniel and Julie have all of my information as well. So, and feel free to call me, email me. There's, for whatever, just call me or email me. I'm, I'm available and willing. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. That's the work. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah. For the play. Oh, by the way, Jeff is ill tonight. And he called me and asked me if I'm a meeting, which is why I'm sitting here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I don't know if we have win or not, but we'll find out. Um, any amendments to the agenda? I have one. Um, appoint uh, a candidate to the Otter Creek Basin Task Force. You can put that last if you want. Appoint one. A candidate for the Otter Creek Basin Task Force. So that we can have a quorum. No. <laughs>
hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Hi, there. <coughs> okay, so we will... I just want to, can I add one thing? Yes. Agenda? yes. I apologize. Yep. Um, certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory. So that'll be under business? Yes. I don't... No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First of I all, I would like to add about the park bench for LCJ. We could do that. Okay. Yeah. It's be the longest meeting we've had in months. And I would like to say hello to Tara Brooks and congratulations on our new member, City Thank Council. You. Welcome aboard. Welcome, Welcome yeah. aboard. Yeah. Uh, any visitors that need to speak? Nope. Warrants? I haven't seen the warrants. Are they passing around? Do we have them here. Okay. Here, we'll just send them down this way. So, Tara, these are the bills that we pay. You've got to sign that at the bottom. We'll pass that around. And then we've got approval of minutes of February 25th, 2020. I'll make a motion. Second. Lowell we'll makes a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion, any corrections, additions, omissions? The only thing I saw was a uh, possible fee for mayor's report. Wow, good reading. <laughs> Anybody else? If not, we'll add that apostrophe. <laughs> All in favor of the minutes as revised, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. And it's before six, so we're going to hold off on the public hearing. We'll move down to business. Um, business 6A, adopt a resolution to establish uniform zoning fees for the city of Regens, which is a possible decision item. This is an item that came back on the agenda from a prior meeting. And Peter, you revised those fees, and I think they were set out in the package. And I have no questions on them. I think that it seems to be what we were looking for. Um, is there a motion to accept the fees in the in the in the, the document as presented? Okay, there's a motion. <laughs> Second. Um, any discussion, Peter? You want to tell us anything? I mean, so it seems unless anybody has any questions. I mean, a couple of changes that were made is the certificate of occupancy for one and two family homes was included rather than having it be a separate fee, um, and the subdivisions was changed the way people talked about. Um, the other thing which was discussed, which is not on here again, has to do with application fees relating to city applications. And the suggestion was that we, because it was a wash, we leave it off. But after um, Daniel and I talked about it, it seems like for accounting purposes, I want to know how much money has come into zoning and how much money has come out of recreation, for example. And I would think that just keeps it clean, even though the amounts involved are pretty small. Okay. So those are the changes in it. Okay. So you're good with that? <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? Any questions? All in favor of the uh, the new uniform zoning fees? If I'd be saying aye. 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 Can I aye. do this to Andy if he wants it? Sure. Yep. Thank you for all your hard work, Peter. And Lynn was an aye on that too. Correct. Uh, oh, six. Have a starting date. Six B. There's a there's a starting uh, there's a starting date on this form. April one. April one. Okay. Good. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yep. April one. Six B is appointment of Cheryl Brinkman to Addison County Solid Waste Management District Board of Supervisors. Cheryl has served us for prior years and she looks like she's willing to continue, so that's good. Yes. Is there a motion to uh, I'll make the motion to appoint Cheryl? Okay. Is there a second? Second. Just on her behalf, I would say she would definitely have been here, but she is really under the weather tonight. Okay. Okay. But but you're telling me that she's going to accept this job. That's good. Okay. She'll be really happy to accept it. Oh, good. <laughs> Any discussion on Cheryl's appointment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Cheryl. And if anyone okay. wants to be an alternate, we're supposed to have an alternate right. person as well. I think Mel's done it in the past. I don't know if I want to do it. So yeah, I did any, it for a little while and Mel did it. And so if anyone wants <coughs> to be an alternate, let me know. 
Actually, no, I was on the other, other economic developers. Don't there. everybody jump at once. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, 6C, adopt a schedule for city council meetings for the following year. That schedule was in our packet as well. Um, and yes. of course, it can be revised, you know, as necessary if, if there's a reason to do that. But it's a, uh, it's a good starting point. Did everyone have a chance to look at that? I've already broken my phone, so we can't change it. Okay. So. All right. Well, Joan has said that the, why I, I bolded the July 28th meeting and the December 22nd meeting because Joan has said that we usually do them mid-month. Isn't that what she said? Joan said that July and December, there's typically one, one meeting. Month, one meeting. One meeting, yeah. They do it mid-month, I guess. Oh, uh, they do one us. meeting mid-month. So I don't know if we want to, if I should scratch those dates off. Well, why don't we leave it on there and then usually in July, it's after budget, it's in the summertime, we don't have much going on. Yeah. In December, it's because of the holidays. Right. Yeah. So I, I think we can accept later. this and we can just, we can make those decisions ahead of time. Sure. Yeah, that's, I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. All in favor of the schedule as tentatively proposed? Do we need motion? I thought I did. No? Motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. <laughs> that's low. Second. And Mark. Okay, we've already had our, our discussion on that. So, uh, all in favor of the schedule as presented? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Nope. Great. Uh, 6D. Lynn, are yeah. you are you willing to are you willing to be deputy mayor again? If that's the choice of the board, I would love to be. Thank okay. you. Is there a motion? I said motion. <laughs> Second. All in favor before she changes her mind. Absolutely. <laughs> you can't vote for yourself, Lynn, either. Any discussion? I don't think there's a conflict. No. Yeah. Or against herself. No. <laughs> okay. All in favor of Lynn Jackson Donnelly as uh, being elected as deputy mayor for the coming year. Aye. 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 Thanks, Lynn. You're welcome. My privilege. You've done a great job. Okay, 6E, adopt Robert's Rules of Order for executive boards and small committees, which waives various formalities and calls for the mayor to vote on all motions. I'll make the motion to accept. Okay, and, and that's a standard uh, acceptance that we do every year. Um, anyone have any questions or comments on that? Anybody? Second, <laughs> Second it? Okay. <laughs> You're familiar with Robert's Rules, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, all those in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Orchard of Order for the City Council. So uh, everybody saying aye. 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 Okay, 6F. Uh, another adoption of a policy that's done annually. Uh, this is the adoption of the conflict of interest policy, which I think was in the packet. It's the same policy we've we've had in prior years. Um, is there a motion to adopt the conflict of interest policy? So moved. Second. David and Lowell. Is there any discussion? It's pretty straightforward, I think. Seems to serve us well. If none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, business 6G, designation of newspaper of record. And our newspaper of record is Addison the Addison Independent. Independent. Yes, sir. And is there a motion to point? Oh, that motion? Designate Second. Addison Independent, okay. Discussion on that. Discussion, all in favor of the Addison Independent. Being the newspaper of record for the city of Regens, signature was saying aye. 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 Congratulations, Andy. Yeah, good job, Andy. Six <laughs> H uh, approval of liquor licenses, and there was a list of all of the liquor licenses that was in the packet. 
we have first class, second class, third class, outside consumption, and live entertainment licenses. I believe, can these all be approved as a single motion? Yes. I think so. Yeah, I and move motion to approve them all. Second. So Lowell made a motion. Second. No, I didn't sign this one. That's Mark's signature. It looks just like mine. Yeah. And no, David, you seconded this? Yes. Okay, so we have the liquor licenses for approval on March 10th, 2020. And is there discussion on any of these? Have we had any city limits problems in the past year? Because I know last year we pushed them off for a couple of weeks. We pulled them out of the list while we were figuring yeah. things out. I don't know. Well, well, we can, we fairly quiet. Well, the chief, the chief has had some problems over there, but he can he can deal with them in the state individually. The state can pull their license if they, and we could we could come back to the table and always do it as well if necessary. If necessary, so we can deal with okay. on a case by case. Okay. And also, just to clarify, there was a second list that I sent you guys. Yeah. You know, there's one in the packet. We had um, a business or two that it. came in last minute, so we we did a we did a new. So okay. It's, it's the one that was signed yesterday. Yep. Okay. If there's no further discussion, uh, all in favor of granting liquor licenses to the to the businesses located on the uh, on the attachment, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. They're approved. Uh, so. Daniel, you're going to have to talk on this one. 6I, adopt a resolution for downtown transportation grant. Yes. So actually, this grant was due yesterday, but um, the administrator of the grant at the transportation fund said that if I that this was supposed to be with the application, he said if I did it the day after, that's fine as well. Good. So I applied for a grant last minute um, to put uh, decorative light fixtures on Main Street on the on the City Hall side of Main Street and how I'm looking at this is like a phase one of multiple phases to moving the power lines behind the Main Street buildings power lines on Main Street don't attach to any of the buildings right now for uh, for electricity so they can they can most likely be put behind the buildings and don't have to go underground which underground is the most expensive way to go about doing anything like that so this is in any event if you move those power lines down the road you need some you need lighting to replace what's there so this is going to act as like a phase one to put lighting on the uh, city hall side of main street um, down the road we can work towards so, moving the, the power lines behind the buildings and putting decorative fixtures on that side of main street as well so would that be underground, like a conduit that would that would be ready to receive lighting, or would it be? So the cool well? thing is, we got city hall and the city green right there, yeah. and we have power to both of those spots, so we can easily just we don't need easements or anything. It's a very simple project, and that side of the street, city hall side of the street, you got the green belt, right? You got city right of way there. You got power, and that I I feel like that side in general needs some TLC, so to it's speak, because there there's. There, there's not really, you know, the, all the businesses are on the other side of the street. I think if you do something like decorative light fixtures to that side of the street, you might see some more commerce <clears> to that side. It makes it more cohesive. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we had talked about that. Um, Bill, you might remember. I mean, that was one of the things that was one of the first things that came up in, in the very first design charrette that we had mm -hmm. way back in the Finding Virgin's days was is that we needed to do something to create some level of synergy between both sides of the street. So it's a good step. What's the amount of the grant? Um, <coughs> there's like 170,000. Is there a match? 50. 50%? 50-50. We can still work on, you know, we have the water tower fund, but, it, you know, we can work on where, where that money's going to come from um, down the road if we're even accepted for the grant. It would run all the way down to the from water. city city hall to Mc, to McDonough. So, city hall of the library is so all the way down in front of the library. And the main so cost down. is excavating. I, I got a I, I can't believe the I got a hundred thousand dollar cost estimate for for excavating alone. Which I, it's, it's crazy, but 
Yeah. And we just have a green update and everyone grabs a shovel. We need a ditch witch. <laughs> from yeah. Well, well I guess right. perhaps the majority of the cost comes in to what, what you fill what, what you fill it in with and the conduit and, and, and the depth that's got to go four feet, apparently. Okay. It may, I, I told... I tell um, all these guys doing the cost estimate for a grant for me, give me the worst case scenario, because you always want to ask for more and not less. Okay. So, um, and then the event, um, I already submitted for the grant. This is just a resolution that they need passed saying that, you know, we're, we're committed to the grant. Um, when are they going to make a decision? Is there, is there I a think, date? I think it's a, in a month. Really? Wow. Yeah, I think it's the end of April or mid-April. So, uh, mid-April sounds good. Okay. I'll keep you guys posted. Again, I don't even know if we're going to get it. It's, it, you know, I, there, there's this opportunity. I, I thought that we needed to apply for something for it, and this is a good, straightforward project. So. Okay. Sounds good. Any other questions on that? We need a motion for this, probably. Yeah, I have a resolution. Though. Okay. So, is there a motion to sign the resolution supporting the uh, downtown transportation grant for lighting? Second. Lowell. And Mark, any other discussion? I don't want to be too aggressive on my first meeting. <laughs> All Jump in favor right of uh, of the grant application? Signal saying aye. 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 Okay. aye. Great. Pass that around. Thank you, Daniel. Six uh, J. Um, this was a carryover from the prior meeting. And I'm not sure what we if we have new information, but we will. Um, we we do. We do. So this is a discussion regarding Northland's job court payment in lieu of taxes. So who is speaking to that? David, you or Daniel? Probably both of us. Okay. Yeah. So we had um, a meeting with Diane, Matt, um, Fred Kenny of the uh, Addison County Regional Economic Economic Development yeah. Corporation, and. Um, you know, it's a very productive meeting. We really discussed alternate uses for that property, problems that we're experiencing with that property right now, and um, possible solutions. Do you want to speak more to that? Yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, the, the the conversation relative to Job Corps is 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 already occurring. I mean, it's something that's been on the radar. Um, for Addison County Economic Development Corporation, Fred has. Um, has been in discussions um, with Ted Brady, who's the Deputy Commissioner of Buildings and Grounds in Montpelier. Um, and so, you know, it's, um, it's well known that, um, you know, there's some impacts relative to Vergenz that were not compensated for. Um, the other thing is, is that's the last large developable property in the city of Vergenz. Um, and it's pretty significant in terms of where it is, us being in the northern tier, it being right in the middle of where the economic development or where the economic corridor will go, its proximity to rail. And so, um, you know, from an economic development perspective, that's clearly not the highest and best use. And so um, that's the direction that the conversation is going. Uh, both Matt and Diane are following up with buildings and grounds. The the state um, the state is is not going to discontinue a lease unless there's some other use. You know, I mean, they 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 rely on revenue from that. Um, but I, I felt it was very very positive. I mean, we're all on the same page in terms of of uh, you know that not being the highest and best use, and that we can do a lot better. There's uh, any number of places in the state where that facility could go. My understanding from discussions that I have had um, with folks at the federal level over the years has been that they are relatively adamant that there be a facility in Vermont. But there's any number of properties that that facility could uh, could fit into. One of the issues with it is the condition of the buildings over there. Um, it's not a marketable property. So, you know, what were my thoughts are it would have to be some sort of a, a quasi public private partnership in terms of, of the buildings themselves because it just 
you know, from a from a cash flow perspective, it just doesn't make sense. Um, but we're, uh, you know, Fred and I will be discussing it at, at our board meeting at uh, ec economic development. I sit on the economic subcommittee, um, so we'll be assessing what the impacts are and also, you know, what the potential is. Additionally, there's some immediate issues there. Um, and the immediate issue is that when someone picks up the phone at that facility and they dial 911 and they need an ambulance or a police officer or a, you know, our, our fireman to show up, um, that rings into security. It rings into the administrative office, which is highly, highly unusual. Um, and so what came out of that discussion, and I believe Chief Merkel is is going to work on it in terms of rectifying that because it's a it's really a public safety issue um, both for the, the residents there um, and the responders they they need to know where to go currently and I was not aware of this but currently once the center is is locked down as they tell it there's a chain that's across the entrance to each individual building so yeah. you know God forbid you had a very very serious situation going on. It's not a on. big chain, but it's they not do. a big chain. Yeah. But but you know what I mean. I mean, it just makes sense. You know, somebody picks up the phone, they ought to every, everywhere else they, they go. So where, so if a student or someone had an emer a, a health emergency and dialed nine one one, it would not. It would go to security. It goes them. to security. It makes no sense. It, 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 it's it actually shows on the nine one one call as one all one a, which is the security <laughs> building. The call doesn't go from the dorm to sure. security. Sure, understood. It goes to, to 911. And then they send whatever okay. to 101A. Okay. So there's, other, there's that problem. There's other problems with how they're triaging emergencies in general that could put us at liability, them and us at <coughs> liability. And it's, so, current, so there's things that need to be done immediately. Yeah, so, so currently we have a situation where, you know, and Daniel, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is, is that um, they're essentially vetting calls for service, which I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't, <laughs> it's catch-22 because we already expend a significant um, amount of time and resources on that. But at the same time, um, you know, it's a safety issue. Those young people that are over there, I mean, they have as much of a reasonable expectation as anybody to mm -hmm. be safe. Um, so these discussions are going to be ongoing. They are yeah. with 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 buildings and grounds, with Fred, with everyone. Just correct, and we'll just kind of see where it goes. Well, yeah, and and the idea is, and you know, and Fred and I've had discussions about this. It's really not, it's really not a Virgin's issue alone, uh, other than the fact that they said they'd pay us and they're they're not. Um, but it's really an opportunity, as I see it, for. Um, you know, for the whole northern tier of the county. And, you know, if I, I am not, I'm, I'm not willing to concede that the future of Addison County rests in being a bedroom community, Chittenden County. And so, you know, if, if, we, if we could find uses and develop that parcel with, you know, what's been spelled out in our city plan where there's mixed use, you know, people can live there, they can walk to work. I mean, that's a, it's a beautiful thing if we can do that. Did that discussion talk about long-term leases or potential potential sale of some of the lot, some of the acreage? It, the it didn't. It didn't go that far. I mean, okay. my understanding and and Diane and Matt were going to be the, I guess, the point people on this. They were going to initiate those discussions, but I, I felt it was really, really positive from Ted Brady. I mean, he was, you know, he's like, bring us something and we'll talk, which is, is encouraging. Um, so it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a real positive. And Diana and Matt said that they're going to bring stuff um, to the state immediately, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. about, especially about these the, the emergency response situation and how that's got to be resolved. Yeah. So. And they they were unable to be here tonight. Yeah. Um, but they will be, um, you know, as this thing plays out, you know, they're going to be a uh, key part of it. Okay, good. So we'll just leave it on the agenda. Lynn, mm -hmm. Yes, Lynn. Um, was there any discussion about a payment in lieu of taxes until all this can be managed? Um, 
Yes and and, and no. Um, the, we're we're going to uh, we're going to explore that. Uh, it's it's that's really our ball to run with. You know, um, again, Daniel, correct me if I have this incorrect, but the the state did not seem to want to go to bat for us on that, um, which is not surprising. Um, but we're we're in a weird position because you have. The state who owns the property and the federal government who leases it from the state and then contract. So we we don't really have any standing. Any yeah to, <laughs> really? to, to say you know Except we, we want services. this or want that. Yeah. So it's re it's really the state that has that pull right now. This the situation shouldn't really be how it is. And I'll give you an example in in New York State. I was told where there's a job corps on state property, the state police respond to those emergencies mm -hmm. only. The, the job corps um, does, does not get services from, from the, the local um, law enforcement services. So usually state properties in other states, it's the state police. So I, you know, in that situation, if you have law enforcement rates go up on the property, then they, the state can in turn raise, raise rent. But we don't. We can't do that because you know we're like this weird third party. In the we're mix. waiting for the state police to just be worse than it already is. Yeah, and and so you know what what will occur with all of these discussions? It's clearly going to bring some pressure to bear, um, both on the possibly the DOL, um, and definitely with the contractor. I mean, and my understanding is is the contract is up fairly quickly. Um, the other thing that's important to point out is they're, they're on a year-to-year -year lease. You know, previously they were on a 20-year lease. So these things can happen fairly quickly. And, you know, to me, I, I think one of the next steps is for us to have a discussion with the contractor um, and put it like this. We, as in they and us, we have a problem here. And we need to figure out a way to resolve this. I mean, there's, I'm, I'm sure they have some very, very smart people working in their legal department. And where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> okay. So it is uh, one minute before six. So we will take a break from the agenda. And shortly we will begin the public hearing for the municipal development plan. Bill, I think you. Uh took the, uh, this? No, the warrants. I think you tucked them underneath there. They haven't made their way over here yet. I think they stalled with minutes. No, I don't have them. Yeah, I think it's under that. I think you had two different stacks. They signed it, and yep. they stalled with you somehow. I'll take that one. I thought I signed the warrants. Well, anyway, we will find the warrants. I don't know. I didn't think so, but is that maybe is that there? Okay, there they we found them. So it is six o'clock. Um, so I will open the public hearing for the updated municipal development plan. And is there anybody here that would like to comment on the plan for this particular public hearing? Shannon, do you want to speak first? Do you want to talk about anything? Um, well, I, at the last time we were we pretty much said what, what was going on, where we are with it, um, some of the changes that we've made. Uh, I guess I would open it up if other people had any questions. The only other things that we've got, once it's adopted, it is uh, we've got some non-substantive changes to make, you know, some spelling, some grammar, things like that. Um, and then we would submit it to Addison County Regional Planning for regional review so that it can be adopted at that level as well. Okay. Anybody have any questions, Carl? No? This is about as exciting as the last yeah. public hearing. <laughs> so they do good work? I guess. Um, okay. Well, if, if there are no comments, if no one has questions of Shannon or the members of the, uh, the Planning Commission, then I will close the public hearing. 
and thank you for coming. And, and then at, at the closing of the public hearing, if you could uh, perhaps have somebody make a motion to adopt, adopt. The, uh, the the municipal plan. So oh, we can't we can do that. that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so moved. David, thank you. Second. Mark, second. So there's a motion to adopt. <coughs> The municipal development plan is proposed. Is there any further discussion in the room or in the city council? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Planning Commission members. Yes. Good job. Thank you. So we will now go back to regular business to 6K. Uh, this was a, an amendment that David asked for, uh, requesting the appointment of a new member to the Otter Creek Basin Task Force. David, who do you have lined uh, up? And Randy Olet, who is a previous uh, city council member and deputy mayor, is interested in serving on the Otter Creek Basin Task Force Committee. Okay. And the meeting times work with his schedule. Okay. That was my first question. And I, I, does this require a motion? I don't know that it does. Thank you. Um, I, I think it, the mayor the just mayor? kind of appointed. So I, I think unless there's an objection, we'll just let Jeff get a formal appointment and proceed from there. Okay, good. Thank you, Randy. And did we appoint that other gentleman that I met at the last Greg. meeting? Yes. Greg, so he's, he's being appointed as well. He's being he appointed. As, I I'll check with Jeff, but okay. I believe that he has been. Okay, good. He was at the meeting. Yes. 6L, uh, Daniel, certification of road and bridge standards. Yeah, so this is a standard form that uh, Jim Lair okay me that I, I guess we He's go signed. over every year that basically says, yeah, that, that we abide by uh, the state standards for roads and culverts and those types of things. Okay. Does that mean we have to paint less parking spaces? Yes, yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so do we need a motion to... Yeah, I think it's probably a motion, yeah. I'll also make said motion. Okay. We'll make the motion. Is there a second? Mark? Is there a discussion on this? This standard piece of paper we have to sign? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Lynn. And we'll go to 6M, which is Lynn's uh, amendment to the agenda. Um, and she sent an email out to some of us. I know I got it. Yep. And uh, Lynn, do you want to speak to this? Yes, Kelsey Jazz had asked me to ask the council. They would like to put a memorial bench in the city park. Uh, Dr. Fixnell, in his honor, he was the originator of the LC Jazz group, and they would like to honor him with either a marble for a wooden bench to the design that the city would approve in his memory. And so what would the next step be? Are, are we saying that we generally support this and then we would talk about a plan or a design from there? Right. They just want to be able to tell the family that that's what they're going to do. Okay. And, but we, I don't want them to go ahead and make any plans unless we're all in agreement that uh, it's some kind of bench Okay. How about if we just reach a consensus on this, and uh, and then if there's a design and a and so on that's presented to us, we'll formally accept it at that point. So is everyone generally in agreement yes. with this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Lenny, you're in agreement with this, I gather. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So I, you pass this on that you know we support it. We'll just uh, hold back on a, on an official acceptance until we have a design and so on, but it sounds great. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, city manager's report. Daniel, you're up. All right, so the finances, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. We should be, if you look at the percentages, at 66% at this point in the year. Um, and if you look at administration, police, and public works, they're all under that threshold. Sewer department, 
is over that threshold, but that's really only because we make quarterly payments to the administration, quarterly pay payments to savings for biosolids and those types of things. So that kind of raises the sewer percentage a little bit. Um, you know, some things that's stood out to me is uh, in the public works department, overtime's a little high. But that's going to tamper off because the, the season's coming to a close. I guess it's it's higher than usual also because we have another employee that we didn't take into account for that would get overtime that was added in to the budget last minute. But it's going to, if you look at salary for the supervisor, straight time and overtime, those three lines, the, the, most likely by the end of the year, they'll even out. And everyone's bottom line is looking pretty good for every department. So. Great. Okay. Um, it's really... All I got, unless anyone has questions. Yes, sir. Quick question. The yeah. Issue that I've <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know if I would recognize. Yes, you have been. <laughs> Thank you. Um, over the years, I had uh, spoken with the city about making auto deposits to the city account for sewer and taxes. And the closest I've been able to come is to have credit union make monthly deposits, write literally write checks yeah. for one twelfth of my taxes and sewer and send them to the city. Now I spoke briefly with um, in fact I might have actually spoken with the uh, with the uh, Morgan um, Something I didn't really factor into that was the additional work it takes, additional admin work it takes to manage those checks 12 times a year versus every uh, three months. A whole pile of them come in quarterly and versus um, once a month. But my question was, well, suppose people were encouraged to pay automatically. They could budget the sewer and tax in. One twelfth is a whole lot better than a quarterly payment. Anyway, um, but I hadn't, realized, I hadn't uh, really understood the additional admin uh, effort that was involved in managing those checks and processing them. So are you talking about um, like an auto draft? From your account? That's exactly what yeah. I do. So, you know, in this transition that we have at City Hall with new clerk, new treasurer, new city manager, I sat down with the banks, um, and there is that capability. We could set that up. However, there's a lot of moving parts in City Hall going on right now, so maybe down the road we could look into that. That's definitely an option. Um, I know from past experience, um, I've had auto drafts set up with utility billing programs. It, it would add an additional step for our administration to go in and process it and then you know it, it creates essentially a file like a payroll file that you that, that you plug in to the bank like uh, like direct deposit so they would have to t that that would be an additional step we would have to work into the administration and it could happen in the future just right now it's not really that much of a priority, but maybe, maybe in the future we will get there. I know some towns do it, but they, they wouldn't do it on a monthly basis. You know, if they're, your real estate taxes are due quarterly, they would do it on a quarterly basis. Sure. So that you know you would get that report from the bank and you'd have a list of all the people that have signed up for the auto deposit and you would just make sure that it all balances and so on. And I, But I, yeah. it certainly is gonna be a wave of the future. So I think that when, when you guys are ready to win, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean you, could think, you could think of it as a simple payroll file. File payroll, you do you generate a direct deposit file and you plug it into the bank, and then after that, you have to do taxes and all these other things. With auto draft, you just create this file and plug it into the bank, and that's it. You don't have to do payroll taxes and all that. So it's really essentially like a simple payroll file. Um, but again, it'd just be another process that we would have to figure out and really incorporate into the administration. Well, what initially prompted that, my questioning to Joan way back when, uh, literally horrified her at the, at the, the thought. <laughs> uh, well, the way I presented it, 
My function for the last 18, 19 years of my 40 down there at the plant was to do customer quality surveys before they can buy anything from us. They have to approve our <coughs> quality system. How do they do that? They send in a survey. Every customer is different from the Boeings and the Airbuses right on down to the smallest uh, uh, vendor. They have to approve our quality system in their house. And one of the questions they always, always ask, information that the customers from, like I said, from the Boeings and the Airbuses right on down to the smallest entity was, what is your bank account number so we can issue our payments to it? So that was my initial question to Joan. Can I have the city's account number so I can deposit my taxes, my sewer, my whatever I owe the city directly to the city? Can I do that? And when she recovered sufficiently, uh, she explained to me the mechanics involved and it wasn't quite as simple yeah. as I had hoped it might be because how would the city know what that payment was for? Well, the city would have to set up the account so it would partition any payment coming in and being able to recognize who it's from, what it's for, its timeliness, and its application. Hadn't thought of that. Mm. The question is still there. Well, the question is still there, and so is the answer. It's floating somewhere. What can we do to make it easier for people to pay their bills? Out of sight, out of mind, it's done. All I had to do, my, my popular position was, all I have to do is remain employed because my check is deposited directly to the, the credit union, and they do all the check writing. All I have to do is keep a job. Well, it's becoming a lot more common, and I think it's something that we should definitely keep on the on you know on our minds. And, and when when everybody is kind of settled into their particular roles yeah. and responsibilities, I it, I think it makes a lot of we sense. We want to get away from the paper. Yeah, but and, and we do it too in our family. So, but just like so, the this the the accounting system does a lot of that work for us. And, and you wouldn't need our account numbers, right? We would, we would just need yours. It would create this file that you plug in, just like a direct deposit file. Exactly right. And, yep. and then, then that way our accounting system talks to the bank and they reconcile, because that's the most important to make sure your numbers reconcile, yeah. the bank and the accounting. And that was Great. the other, that was Joan's yeah. position. That's why it's not that easy just to, just right. to shoot money over she to said, the city. We got to make sure that the money's accounted for. She said, you give me your account number and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear her now. <laughs> uh, I yield back. Thank you. Stormwater project. How's that going? Yeah, so uh, the mayor and I, we sat down with um, Neil from uh, DEC, who lives in town, and um, he, you know, we talked about um, the progress I've made in trying to get funding for this uh, project that you know, I sent I sent you guys the preliminary engineer report that recommended the huge infrastructure project and uh, Neil had some he, he's got some really good contacts he gave us some really good suggestions on who the mayor and myself could contact and he's emailed since then um, you know other people from different organizations that I should talk to um, grants that I'm looking at is uh, are the NBRC, um, which is Northern Border Regional Commission, that's economic development money. USDA, that grants due by April 15th. And my engineer and myself are working on that. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers does a 542 program grant through uh, the Lake Champlain Basin program. Um, that grant, if we were to get funding from the Corps of Engineers, whatever project is done would have to be done by the Army Corps of Engineers standards. They give a large portion of money for projects, but you would probably have to go a little bit above and beyond um, on your infrastructure project. But that's, we're looking at that also. Clean water through the state we applied for a couple weeks ago. And there also might be CDBG money, uh, CDBG money um, through the Department of Commerce. So we're looking at all those avenues, still trying to piece things together, and uh, we'll keep you we'll keep you posted. Hopefully, we can meet the mayor and I can sit down with uh, 
our federal rep representative or congressional representatives um, to put pressure on these funding sources. Good. So it's an ongoing project. Yeah. Complex. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, that's all I got on that. Okay. Does anyone have any questions regarding that? Website? Um, yeah, the, the website, I entered an agreement with Revise. Um, I gave them, I, I selected a couple things and gave them pictures. They're in the process right now of migrating everything over to um, a new website. Um, they're, they're, they've been really good to work with. They said even if, like, our current website was to shut down or unexpectedly or something like that, that they could get us up with a temporary or something. Hopefully in the next week we have a new website, which is really, it's rather quick. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully something very soon will happen. And right now, I'm because of our domain and um, you know, working on the cloud and with our IT company, I'm kind of restricted from sending emails to certain do other domains, which has kind of hindered my day to day. So I'm looking forward to getting this behind us and getting a, a really good website also. Um, I, I coordinated with the website company and our IT provider. I got them both on the phone at the same time. So they're, they're all speaking the same language and hopefully um, in, the, in a week we'll have something up and running. Good, okay. Any questions? Rec coordinator. Um, so Kim Buckley started yesterday. Um, I, I, I was really busy yesterday, but I, I did my best to take her around town a little bit. Um, she'll be in tomorrow if any of you guys want to come come meet her. She, she seems really great so far. She's, she's come up with good ideas as far as, she didn't even know the, the outdoor playground existed. And she's, she has these ideas of how to promote it better from you know, put signs in different places. So is she regular hours or what, what's she doing? Um, so Peter, um, and her are going to be sharing that computer space in the back. Um, Peter's here Tuesdays, Thursdays, so by default, um, we thought starting out Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. So, um, that's the plan. However, sh her hours are going to be kind of varied, you know, as we discussed, mm -hmm. um, we allotted her a certain amount for the rest of the year. And plus, you know, the nature of her job is coordinating events that happen off hours. So, um, you know, it's still, we'll be, uh, we'll be working at it. And I'm excited to have Tara on board because she's got a lot of experience. We have a meeting tomorrow morning at 8.30. Yeah. So. Great. We're moving forward. I think at least part of the rec committee is meeting tomorrow evening. Probably the school, so I don't know if she's planning it. She is. She already responded that she is. Yeah, the rec committee meeting got canceled, unfortunately, because of a lack of a quorum. And um, but they're yeah, they're still. They're still made meeting to talk unofficially. Yeah, they're meeting to talk unofficially, and Kim, our rec coordinator, will be there. Good. Okay. And admin. La yeah. Lastly, um, we interviewed three. Yeah, three candidates. Myself. Morgan and um, Abby um, for admin assistant, part-time admin assistant. Um, I made an offer yesterday, so and, and I'm still waiting to see if this individual accepts or declines. Um, hopefully, we can bring somebody on board really soon, relieve some of the burden um, from Abby and Morgan up front. And, yeah, good. Well, that's good news. Yeah, great. Okay. And uh, th this person, I'm hoping to have work Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday to uh, really hammer out accounts payable and payroll because that would really a big burden off the administration and then they can focus on higher level stuff. Any, Any questions of Daniel? Okay. Uh, Mayor's report, the, the City Council goals, since we have two members that aren't here, I, I just think it would be wise to table this. I mean, I, I did take a look at it, but it... The mayor, the mayor kind of briefed me. He, he basically wants us just to review this and come up with new goals for next okay. month. Okay, okay. That's okay. really... Oh, yeah, that's... I wondered about that because I wasn't sure where these yep. came from initially. And, and I briefly talked to the mayor about this. My, my plan is to incorporate a whole bunch of goals into the next... into the budget put some narrative to the numbers. Um, so hopefully we can, it'll work out well where we can establish goals from the council and I can work them into the budget, establish goals from public works and police department and we'll, we'll have a whole 
slew of goals that go along with the numbers. And Perfect. Okay. So you have your homework. Yes? Just real quick. Um, the, the goals will have measurement metrics included in the plan. Uh, so we can measure our progress or lack thereof, see what direction we're going in or failing to, and make the necessary mid-course corrections based on these metrics? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, you have goals and then you have performance measures. You know, performance measures are Milestones. More, uh, yeah, more to that point. So uh, goals really, you know, yes or no. But I also want to incorporate performance measures. You know, how many miles of this did we do? How many calls of this did we do? You know, that, that stuff I'm going to incorporate as well. Seems like you know, some of it is quantifiable and some of it's obviously not going to be. But where we can, I think it, that's yeah. definitely what we should be doing. Yeah. Well, the, those non-quantifiable areas are the areas that <coughs> beg discussion. I mean, that's what brings us together to chat about it and, and go forward. So yeah, not everything is, is measurable. In a, in a numerical sense, or but the point is that there is some measurement and some accountability, some visibility, and um, that we can all agree on. I mean, otherwise, why have a council? Yeah. You know? Well, I, I think yeah. Daniel is is well positioned to do this. Too, Absolutely. So. Yeah, we're delighted you're aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Well, one of the one of the things that I would point out with regard to that is that we already have a body of goals, essentially. We just adopted the city plan. And so our job, and and I, I think that we're in a better position than we've ever been in terms of we have some very, very clear documentation of where we're headed. So, you know, the way that I look at it is, is um, you know, that's the roadmap and you know, for me personally, what I'm looking at in terms of goals and objectives is, is how, do, how do we get from point A to point B? What is it that we need to do to implement Execution. that vision that is very, very well vetted? And, and, the, and those goals can come from the, the plan. It can come from the community visit plan. Absolutely. It can come from the master plan. Yeah. It can come from Absolutely. a host of things that sure. we just need to kind of distill into things that we all kind of agree on and exactly. prioritize them. Yeah. Our, our job, I mean, I think that, you know, again, I think that we have a, a very, very clear vision yeah. of where it is that we're going. Um, and we've just got to figure out how to get there and make sure that every decision that we make is in keeping with achieving those objectives. Yep. Yes, sir. Just as an addition to Dave's point, we've had many discussions. I spent a lot of years with procedures. Joel will bear me out on this. These things can't be written so concretely that there is no wiggle room. They have to be living documents because life changes. We have to have the flexibility to build in and the, the wherewithal to force us to get together, discuss the changes that we need to make to bring our processes in line with the current needs. I mean, if, 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 if you lock yourself in, you're doomed to be in constant default. Yeah. Yeah. And that's nasty. So, yep. um, no, but, that, that's a great point, yep. So living document, it moves. It's a moving target. Life moves. So, Lynn, we're at the end of our our agenda. Do you have anything you want to say? No, you did very well, young man. <laughs> <laughs> then be someday you'll be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rusty. Been there and done that. Talk about the park briefly. Were you gonna? Oh, um, yeah. Can we can we talk about sure. something well, else? Yeah. Um, it's it wasn't an amendment to the agenda though. Yeah, that, that, this is just a discussion about uh, McDonough Park. Um. So there, there's possibly a graveyard site uh, at, wait, no, not McDonald's. There is a, no, McIntosh. McIntosh Park. Park. McIntosh Park, yeah. yes. There is a grave site. Donald McIntosh is buried up on the back side of the yeah, hill. Right. And in addition, there may be um, an, art, uh, an Abnaki presence up there. Um, and those two things are being explored. Um, the third thing is, 
that this project is going to need zoning review. This is the bike, the yeah. bike, bike path, rec, rec, yeah, yeah, the mountain bike path. It yeah. needs a, a zoning review, and I talked to Scott um, about that. So that's going to be coming forward. So there shouldn't be any development, anything going on in that area until after the zoning is through. And that even includes Boy Scouts cutting down trees because that's part of development. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, great. Thank you. Anything else? Is there a motion? We'll adjourn. make the motion to adjourn. Second. We'll make the motion. Mark second. Lynn, you good? I'm good. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Good job, Bill.